Hi everybody, today I'm going to be talking about time in Markov cohort simulations and in particular talking about tunnel states. First of all, what sort of time do we mean? Um, because there's actually a couple of different sorts of things we could mean when we say time in a model. So we could mean the time since the model started. We might call that the model time or system time. Sometimes we call it the wall time because it's like there's a clock on the wall and that's telling us how long the model's been running for. The other thing we could be interested in is the time since entering the current state in our model, and that's called the sojourn time. Now these two different um, quantities of time are only equal for states that cannot be entered after the model start and where you do start in that state. So let's look at the first one in a bit more detail, time since the model started. Usually, time since the model started is related to age. Um, so that's if your cohort has a common age. And that means it's really useful for things like age-dependent risks of disease, age-dependent mortality risks, age-dependent quality of life, plenty of things. On the other hand, time since entering the current state, which was called sojourn time, is useful for other things, such as the condition-specific survival for a disease, or the cost of treatment, which could start off high but then drop as, um, as a disease is stabilised. Quality of life also can be initially low after a diagnosis and then improve, or can start to decline as people approach the end of life. Now in a Markov cohort simulation, you can't track the time since entering the current state or the sojourn time because it would violate the Markov property. So we have a workaround that we use and that's called tunnel states. So what we do is we split our health state into multiple states and then some of those states are called tunnel states. And the idea is that you can't stop or stand still in that tunnel they don't have a transition back to themselves. You have to leave that state at the end of the cycle. So here we've got a three state model with healthy and diseased and dead. It's not possible to recover from the disease. So we can only go from being healthy to being diseased or from healthy to being dead. And then when we're in the diseased state, we can either remain in the diseased state or transition to death. So what we would do is we would expand that diseased state to have some extra tunnel states. So you can see here we have tunnel states indicated with dashed edges. And so the first of these is people who have had the disease um, for less than a year or for up to one year. And the second of these would be people who have had the disease for um, more than one, but up to two years or cycles, you know, your cycle length might not be a year. And then your final box, final state, which does have a loop back to itself, is people who have had the disease for over a certain length of time. Now, in each one of these uh, tunnel states, it's still possible to transition to dead. But if you don't transition to dead, then you have to move on to the next one of the tunnel states. So when do you stop adding tunnel states? How many should you have in your model? I would say you should keep going until it stops making a difference um, and that will generally happen when either your subsequent transition probabilities and payoffs are approximately constant so it's not really making a difference uh, because each of the new states looks very much like the previous state or because there's a negligible proportion of the cohort is reaching those tunnel states that you're adding so you know the disease survival is so poor that people aren't reaching those later on tunnel states. Just a small note when you're adjusting for mid-cycle transitions. So calculating probabilities can get a bit confusing when you try to use a half cycle correction or similar adjustment. I'll have some more detail on these later when we cover them. Your next steps should be uh, to implement tunnel states in a Markov model in Excel or in R or perhaps to learn how to choose your cycle length. Thanks.